Hello, hello everybody, and this is my 75 gallon green jade shrimp tank. So over the course of doing all these different shrimp tanks, I have discovered that the best way to go about it is to set the tank up the best way you can and let nature take its course without messing it up. <laughs> nature does better. And of course, there are certain rules and stuff we need to follow to make this happen. But the best approach I have found time and time again is the hands-off approach. Now this tank, I noticed just a little bit of algae starting to grow in there, and I think this is an intake sponge right here. Look at those green jade shrimp. And I think this filter is pretty much clogged up. I don't think it's doing much flowing. It's time to... And then all this moss down here has been shaded out. So we're still going to leave a whole bunch of moss in here. I'm not going to pull all the moss out. We're going to clear out a bunch, and then we're going to see what the shrimp are looking like. And I need to do this because I don't want my pretty awesome crypt getting drowned out by the moss, and that will happen. So let's get started on this project, the 75-gallon green jade shrimp tank. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is deal with this algae. This is the really soft, fluffy green stuff. Let's see here. I think I'm going to have to move some, some of my lights out of the way to make this more manageable. This is really gross right here. Oh my goodness. And you can see the shrimp are going to be a constant battle to get off of here. Watch out, shrimps. Watch out, shrimps. Well, I really didn't want to get it cloudy right the very first thing I did. But, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. That's all just a big clump of algae. So the next thing we're going to do is pull out all this growing up here. Well, that really, really sucks. That's disconcerting. I ain't seen duckweed in this tank in a year. Pull out this great big huge wad of moss growing up on the filter. And there's freaking duckweed trapped in there somehow. And let me tell you, I hate duckweed. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to. Oh man, there's a bunch in there trapped. Not a ton, ton, but. Oh, I hate it. Still can't see that filter yet. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so thick down here. This is crazy. Oh, goodness. Get off this moss baby shrimp. Come on now. Now we got the filter sponges cleaned. So now we're going to see what we can do here on the bottom here around this big crypt. That's the next thing we need to clear out. Is around the big crypt. We even got moss taking hold in the crypt. Look at all the shrimpies. Look at all the shrimp. 
Uh, there's a bunch of muck down there. Uh, yeah, and there goes everything being nice and neat. <laughs> That's all right. We'll get this all stirred up. And this tank has a lot of good filtration in it. And it will be just fine. So we're still pretty stirred up. But look at the shrimp we got in here now. Lots of really, really good ones. Now, I've let this tank go. And, uh, well, as far as the moss goes, because like I explained earlier, that's what they like. They don't want you in here messing it up. But sometimes you reach a point where you just got to. But just because I haven't been in here doesn't mean I haven't been calling these shrimp because, like I said, I've been selling shrimp out of, out of here every week. And when I sell shrimp, I just whoop, random scoop. And the ones that ain't good enough get separated out. So every time I catch shrimp to sell shrimp, I'm always doing a little bit of calling. So that helps too. So it's not like I've let these tanks go completely untouched. I think... I did this about a little over a year ago. It might have been like a year and two or three months when I redid this tank completely. And then sometime like last summer or fall, I think I did another where I ripped out a bunch of moss while I'm doing here and looked at the shrimp. I tell you what, just from right here, I don't see too much to complain about really. Man, those shrimpies are looking so good. All right, so let's get back to getting this moss on this side figured out. All right, so now we're going to, I'm sure some of this is going to be growing into the crypt. Look, oh my God, look at these, look at the green jades. Yes, look at that. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Pretty good to see. Six years of work on these guys. I've had these guys a long, yeah, I think I've had these five years. I do believe five or six years. So I've had my green jades. All right, so we got all that. Look at all the shrimps. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. There's so much moss in here. Very crazy. Alright. I think that's more than I wanted to pull out. So I'm gonna... That can stay. <laughs> and this will get pulled. Every time I do a video like this, even if I say the <laughs> say what it is, people still say, well, what kind of moss is that? Or that Java moss you got is awesome. It is not Java moss. It is pilo moss. Now let me tell you, I think most mosses prefer softer water. My water is good hard water for neos. And so I'm kind of limited in the kind of plants I've tried several several mosses and most of them don't do good but this one this pile of moss no matter what kind of i throw it in my really hard tap water it does awesome i throw it in my super soft caradina tank it does awesome so this moss is happy this is, I like to say, this moss just likes it wet. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I'm going to show you how I do my intake sponges. Now, these are the exact same size size 5 ATI sponge filters 
and they come with this guy so this goes like so uh, actually i think this goes like so to keep it the same setup as before and then this comes these will meet there in the middle And boom, grab it on there. And then this guy fits onto the filter intake. So I, another question I get asked a lot is, what do you add to your tank? How do you get so many shrimp? Well, let me tell you. All I do is add my tap water. Water's going back in now. And I add some safe which is the same as prime just a concentrated powder form because my tap water has just a little tiny bit of chloramines in it all right so we got the tank up and running again we got it all settled down you can see that current uh, that sponge that was just a trickle now it's just gushing out of there and look at all the shrimpies. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to try to get some shrimp gathered here and some shrimp gathered here. And we'll, we'll just make a whole bait pile right out here in the open. And we'll get as many bad ones out as we possibly can. guys let's see how many of these we can get out of here usually these guys are pretty predictable but sometimes you get some what the heck type of thing is you that's kind of there's a weird looking one huh. what the heck is you son i don't know Alright, here's oh, let's see. Got that one. A yellowy looking male. Really though. This green jane line, I mean this is the one I self out of. This one is really, really good. As you can see, there's not there is a lot a lot of shrimp here and really there's not hardly any bad one bad bad ones there's some mid-grade ones and there's a few like clearish looking brownish ones sprinkled in here and there but not really i mean <laughs> look at how good these guys are it's gonna sit down spend hours i guess i can go after the ones with the I removed the ones with the big back stripes. There's a male. That's not superb. Let's see. And like I said, I I used to be relentless pulling out the ones with the back stripe. And that's not really too much of an issue these days. Yeah. Another bad male. Most of them are just like in this tank. They're almost just bad males. It's pretty much the only thing you got to pull out here. I think it's this right here. A real little yellow one, it looks like. That one's a real little, but real bad. I don't even know if you can see that one. That's a peewee. You can tell he's going to be like yellow or brown, clear or something, or he ain't green. So these are the ones we pulled out. You can tell there's there's a handful of really bad ones, but most of them are just kind of mid grades. And some aren't even that bad. And look at how much moss we pulled out of here. Holy crap. 
Holy smokes, we got a lot of moss and here's the tank. Still a little cloudy, but it's cleared up pretty good. We're about uh, three or four hours later. And check it out. Wow, wow, wow. And one of them ended up a couple of algae wafers. In it. Oh, there's a big yellow stripe one I missed. <laughs> You always do that. The yellow stripes are not a huge priority. But I think the tank, I didn't mess it up too much. I think it looks pretty good. We got the filters maintenanced. We got the shrimp situated. We got them cold. And now it's going to be a lot easier to take care of it. And something funny here. This was just a little tiny patch of gravel with black sand. And look what has happened as the crypts have grown and expanded. They just pushed the gravel out. So that was just a little tiny circle of gravel. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Look how many are back here. Man. Holy smokes. All right, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed coming along with me on my 75-gallon green jade shrimp tank project today. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.